What's up YouTube? Outdoors man here. Today I'm going to be showing you how to replace the front wheel bearings on a 2008 Honda 4Trax Rincon 680FA. Um, this process is pretty similar to other Honda models and it also works on other models of ATV but uh, I'll be showing you specifically on the Rincon today. So we're going to start by uh, what I've already done, uh, taking off the wheel. So that's fairly simple. Just going to use your, I think on this model it's a 17mm uh, socket, uh, remove the lug nuts off of the wheel and remove your wheels. So to start, you're going to start by taking a pair of uh, pliers and kneading those pliers uh, and removing the cotter pin on the outside of the CV shaft axle. So you want to remove that and uh, we can get rid of this as we're going to be replacing it with a new one later. Next you're going to use a 22 millimeter socket to remove the nut off the end of that CV axle there. If you have a second person, you might be able to have that person hold onto the brakes for you uh, so that the axle doesn't spin. I don't have that, so I'm just going to use this uh, pry bar here to hold it in place for me. So next we're going to be removing the brake caliper assembly here. So there's two, I'm sure I get in here and show you. There's two bolts that go through the caliper assembly here. These are an eight millimeter Allen key. There's one here, one down here. We're just gonna be removing those and pulling the caliper assembly off. So as I've been taking this bolt out, I'm finding a lot of buildup of crud and dirt and all kinds of debris on that bolt. So before I put that back in, I'm just going to clean that up a little bit with a rye brush and make sure I use a little bit of anti seize on there, just because you don't want that to get uh, rusted up and stuck. Next, we're going to remove this brake caliper off of the rotor. Just going to give it a pull. And uh, this is a good opportunity for you to take a look at your brake pads here, just see how they're doing. Uh, these ones aren't worn out yet, I've just checked them fairly recently, but this is a good opportunity to kind of take a look and inspect your brakes. Uh, when you put your brakes up here, just make sure they're out of the way, but that they don't fall down. You don't want these getting damaged. You don't want that line here, your brake line, getting damaged at all. Just kind of tuck it up out of the way. Uh, and if need be, you can use a bungee cord to kind of keep that up out of the way as well. Next, we're going to remove the hub off of the CV axle end here. Uh, so this is normally when you're going to find your play with your wheel bearings which are inside of here. Uh, these ones, as you can see, aren't very bad. There's not a lot of play for them back. Uh, but because the other side was so bad, uh, when I bought the kit, I got both uh, sets. So that's why I'm doing this side uh, today. So you just kind of give this a pull. And uh, that'll come right off like that. Our next step is going to be to remove three uh, steering components. The first is going to be our tie rod, which is right here. So the other portion of the tie rod we're going to remove by removing this cotter pin and undoing this bolt. The second is our upper ball joint. That's fairly similar. There's going to be a cotter pin in this king nut right here. We're going to remove that cotter pin and remove that bolt of the upper tie rod. The third is the lower tie rod, which is right here. So once again, it's got a cotter pin going through the bottom. We're going to remove that and remove this nut. Once you've got the cotter pin removed, you're just going to use your 18 mil socket here and remove this nut. Next, when you've got that cotter pin off, you can use a 17 millimeter wrench and remove that nut. this tie rod. Uh, there are specific tools for this, but today I'm just going to use a hammer to just kind of tap it out.
So you just want to make sure that you're gentle and uh, don't damage the tie rod itself. I'm just going to kind of set that out of the way. Your next step is going to be to remove this bottom ball joint. You can use a specific tool to get it off, which looks like a fork that goes in here and pops that ball joint loose. But since I don't have one on hand here, I'm just going to use a hammer on the bottom of the bolt. I put the nut back on just to protect that those threads. We're just going to kind of tap it loose. Next, we're going to be removing this upper ball joint. And again, there is a specific tool that goes in here to remove the ball joint. But if you don't have one, you can just use a hammer on right on the knuckle there and just give it a smack and it will pop that ball joint loose. There we go. You can see it comes loose just like that. To make the next step easier, I'm going to be unbolting my suspension here, my shock, just because it puts pressure down on the suspension. So if I'm able to remove the shock, the upper control arm will move easier and I'll be able to remove the hub a little bit easier. So you don't have to do this, but I'm going to do it, especially because I have a bit of a lift on here, uh, just going to give me a little bit more room to work. So to remove my suspension, I'm going to use two 14 millimeter uh, sockets on here. And I'm just going to remove the suspension here. And like I said, that just allows this upper control arm to move more freely. And as you can see, everything comes apart nicely like that. So with that removed, you're going to be able to remove your CV action here. And you're going to be able to remove your hub itself. And that is inside where your wheel bearings are. So what we're going to do is you're going to use either a screwdriver or some kind of a pry bar or what I've got here is a seal puller. And there's a seal on the outside of this uh, hub here that we're going to have to pull out. So you want to be gentle with it if you're planning on using it again. I'm not because the kit comes with a new seal. So we're just going to pop it out like that. Inside you can see the bearings and the little snap ring that uh, holds them into place. Next, we're going to remove the snap ring that holds the bearing in place. To do that, you're going to need a pair of snap ring pliers. Uh, I can't think of any other good way to get this out other than using snap ring pliers. So if you don't have any, you might have to go buy them. You're just going to compress that snap ring and just pull it out like that. And be careful when you let that go as they can go flying sometimes too. They're under pressure. Next, we're going to flip the hub over and then we're going to repeat those same two steps. So start by pulling that seal out. And I believe I stand corrected. I'm just cleaning up the bearing grease a little bit here. And it looks like there is not actually a second retaining ring on the opposite side here. So next we're going to need to move on to either a press if you have one or find another way to press that bearing out of the hub. So I'll show you how we're going to do that if you don't have a press. So since I don't have a bearing press, I'm going to use this uh, kind of bearing set tool that I have. And what it is is just a, a rod with a cylindrical disc on the end of it. And uh, it fits different sizes of space. So this one, for example, is a 50 millimeter. Uh, so this is what I'm going to use. I put my uh, hub into a vise and I'm just going to put this on top and then I'm going to hit down with a hammer, uh, preferably a dead blow hammer so you don't damage your, your tool here. And that should press the bearing out of the bottom side. For those of you that aren't familiar with a dead blow hammer, a dead blow hammer is just a like miniature sledgehammer or mallet uh, with lead shot inside of it and rubber ends. That way when you're hitting down on another piece of metal, or something else, uh, it doesn't damage it. It's not metal on metal. So this is what a dead blow hammer is. So I'm just gonna hit down onto this tool here and try to press that bearing through. So I've switched up to a 44.5 millimeter. I think the other one was just getting caught on the edge of that racer there. So I'm just gonna try a little bit of a smaller one here. And as you can see, I've switched to the regular sledge just to get a bit more weight on it. And there we go. So as you can see, that is our bearing. And you can see it's still, still intact, but it is a little bit rough. Could use a little TLC 
it's got a lot of mud and dirt in there which is pretty common when you're going quadding you end up going through the mud to the muskeg and it gets into your bearings